the Truth in Lending Act. This is a law that governs lending, any kind of lending. It could be lending for purposes of buying property, or it could be lending for the purposes of buying a car. The Truth in Lending Act applies to any consumer loans. Anytime we're making loans to consumers, the Truth in Lending Act is in effect. And there are several things about the Truth in Lending Act that you need to know. One of the first has to deal with advertising. Okay. Regulation Z, as in zebra, of the Truth in Lending Act deals with advertising finance. It says whenever you advertise finance, then you have to disclose several things to the potential borrower. You can't just advertising, you can't just advertise financing and say, oh, payments as low as $8.95. Am I advertising the house when I say that, or am I advertising the loan that goes with the house? No. I'm advertising the loan as much as I am the property. Does that make sense? So if you turn over to page 328, it tells you what four things you must disclose about a loan when you advertise a loan. Now, do you always have to disclose these things? Or only when you advertise financing? Only when you advertise financing. So, can you, the question I have now is, can you advertise property without advertising financing? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, let's talk about the four things we must disclose if we advertise financing, and then we'll talk about how to stay away from advertising financing. Okay? If I'm advertising a loan, I have to tell the borrower what the annual percentage rate of that loan is. Now, we've dealt a lot with percentage rates on loans so far, right? Those are not APRs, though. Those are what we call raw interest rates. Here's the thing. Interest is not the only money you pay to borrow somebody else's money. When you take out a loan, you pay a lot of closing costs. Origination fees, discount points, all those things. Your APR is what your interest rate would be once you take into account all those fees that you pay. Does that make sense? So is your APR going to be higher or lower than your actual interest rate? It's going to be higher because it's taking into account those fees that you've already paid. Does that make sense? So, if I'm advertising a loan, the first thing I have to disclose about that loan is what's the APR of the loan? The second thing, all finance charges, and these are in that first paragraph in 328, all finance charges associated with the loan, and you need to know these four. Absolutely. Origination fees, any prepayment penalties, anything like that. So all the uh, finance charges associated with the loan. Number three, the total number and amount of all the payments. So how many payments you make and how, what the amount of each one of those payments is. And number four, the total amount financed. In other words, how much are they borrowing? How much of a down payment would they need to make? So when you start advertising loans rather than property, you made a lot of extra work for yourself. Would you agree with that? In having to disclose all this. So what do you try, want to try to stay away from if you can? How about loans? Advertising loans rather than property. So the federal government has given you a good gauge of when you're advertising loans. And you need to know this, it's in that second paragraph on page 328. Regulation Z, which is the part of the Truth in Lending Act that deals with advertising, says that you're, you are not advertising a loan unless you use trigger terms. And they define trigger terms as numbers. If you use a number when you're talking about a loan, then you're advertising the loan. So, Payments from $8.95 a month, is that a trigger term? Yes. yes. So that means I'm doing what? Advertising a loan, which means I have to disclose what? 
ABR, finance charges, the total of all the payments, and the total amount financed. I would have to tell you, but here's the thing. How did you come up with that 895 number? That's the natural question, right? Like payments from 895 a month doesn't tell me anything. How much am I borrowing? How many payments do I have to make? Is it 30? Is it 360? Is it 820? You see what I'm saying? How about if I say low monthly payments? Have I used any trigger terms? No. No. Am I advertising a loan according to the federal government, according to Regulation Z? No. no. So do I have to disclose anything about that loan? No. no. Simple as that. If I'm using a number, I'm not advertising finance. Or I am advertising finance. The only exception to that rule that I can think of is you are allowed to say 100% finance available when you're talking about VA loans. Because VA loans are 100%. You have to be probably USDA as well. I'm not seeing that one specifically called out, but most likely. Does that make sense for everybody, though? If you use a number, it's probably a trigger term. You know, 4.25% interest rate, is that a trigger term? Yes. Yeah. No money down, is that a trigger term? Yes. Yeah. No. No. No number. No number there. No money down. Zero down. Is that a trigger term? Uh, no. Yes, it is. Zero is a number. Spell it out. No money down? Spell it out. No money down. There is no number in there. Zero down, that's a number. Okay. What if you use a picture of a dollar bill crossed out? <laughs> would not be considered <laughs> that's a trigger term. That's good. I would think. It's yeah. crafty marketing right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can I relate this to like car commercials? Or <laughs> that's exactly what you can relate it to. Oh, the, you know, the, 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 the super fast talking dude at the end of the commercial and the little fine print at the end of a car oh, advertisement. That is the Truth and Lending Act in action. Because during the commercial, they almost always say own it from $199 a month, right? right? Yeah. That's the trigger term. And so in order for that advertisement to be legal, they have to give the disclosure at the end. And so if you pause it, next time you see one of those things, I'll pause it at the end. And that fine print at the bottom, what they're reading is going to be the APR, the total and amount of all the payments, the total finance charges, and the total amount financed. It's all going to be in there to comply with this regulation. Does that make sense? Now, what a lot of brokers will do, because they do want to advertise, you know, here, why would somebody want to say, you know, payments from $7.99 a month? Well, because that attracts people. It works. It's effective, right? So a lot of brokers do want to do that. What I would suggest is partner with a lender, and if you're going to have that, wherever you have the $7.99 a month, like on a flyer at the house, on the back side, have the lender work you up like a loan estimate that has all these things disclosed. Does that make sense? So you can do it that way if you want to use the numbers. But for your purposes, the way to stay away from having to disclose those four things is to not use numbers in your advertising because numbers are trigger terms. Okay? Um, uh, let's see here. The penalties for violating Regulation Z, pretty stiff. Uh, $10,000 for each day the violation continues. Uh, that's a pretty stiff penalty. Um, the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, um, all you need to know is that we cannot discriminate in lending on the basis of, uh, basi it's basically the Fair Housing Act, but with a couple of different protected classes. Race, color, religion, national origin, or sex are all the same as the Fair Housing Act, but marital status and age are different. Age is not a protected class in fair housing. You can put a sign out in front of a house that says no, no old people allowed. That is perfectly legal. It is not a protected class. It is legal for you to discriminate. It is not legal to discriminate in the granting of credit based on age. If it were, it would be very hard for people to get 30-year mortgages past a certain age. Right? I mean, just logically. I closed one one time, and he was 84 and she was 83. And they got a 30-year fixed rate loan. And when they sign the note, if the, on the note, the, la, the date of the last payment is on there. And I'll never forget, the husband looked at the wife, he goes, I think we're going to win on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but you cannot discriminate on the basis of uh, age or marital status when you're granting credit. And actually, you can't.
can't discriminate on the basis of where the income comes from either. If the income comes from something like a disability check or, um, uh, or some other um, pension, social security, you have to use all that income to qualify someone. That's the other part of the Equal Credit Opportunity Act. All right. Um, Fair, Credit, the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Um, basically, this gives consumers the right to receive one free credit report from per year from each of the national credit bureaus. Each credit bureau must provide you with, and there are three of them, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax are the three, okay? Um, but each credit bureau must provide you upon request, now they're not gonna tell you they must provide it, they'll try to sell it to you, but if you make written requests to them once per year, they're required to give you a copy of that report. Contrary to popular opinion, there is no harm to your credit from you pulling your credit report yourself. Yes, it does hurt your credit for others to pull your credit report. Those are what we call hard credit pulls. If you're applying for credit and somebody pulls your credit, yes, it does hurt your score. But you pulling your credit does not. You can pull it 30 times a day if you want to. Why, why is that? Uh, why is what? Because the message you're sending to lenders is that you need credit, you need credit, or you want credit. and you want credit. Now, how much it harms your score is relative to where you are. If you have a pretty low score, then applying for more credit, it hurts you pretty bad. If you have a pretty high score, it doesn't have much of an impact. Okay. bottom of page 329, there is a very important law that you need to know. We're going to talk about it more in chapter 15, but I want you to go ahead and memorize the name of it now. RESPA. What it stands for. Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act. It says we'll talk about it a lot in chapter 15. Look ahead and see what the name of chapter 15 is. Closing. Closing the transaction. So if we're going to talk about RESPA a lot in Chapter 15, what do you think RESPA deals with? Settlement. Closing. closing or settlement. Absolutely. It is a law that governs closing or settlements when there are loans involved. Remember, this is a finance chapter, right? Financing is all about loans. RESPA only applies when there are loans involved. What well, the rule actually says... RESPA is in effect when any federally related mortgage is being issued. Federally related mortgage. Well, is a VA loan federally related? Yeah, because yeah, it's backed by the government. Is an FHA loan federally related? Yeah, because yeah, it's backed by the government. Is a USDA loan federally related? Yeah. Yes, because it's backed by the government. Is a conventional loan federally related? Who's going to buy it? And where could they borrow money from in times of trouble? So is a conventional loan federally related? Yes. Is every loan federally related since Fannie Mae ends up buying them all? So when is RESPA in effect? Whenever there's a loan. Cash deal is RESPA in effect? No. No. That's the only time. So that's a good question. Purchase money mortgage or seller financing would probably be an example of when RESPA would not be in effect because there's no instance in which Fannie Mae is going to end up buying that. So that's a good example of one where RESPA would probably not be in effect. And the borrower, lender, i.e. seller, would not have to follow the regulations of RESPA. And we'll talk about what those regulations are in Chapter 15. But for right now, I want you to know RESPA stands for the Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act, and that is in effect any time a loan is being issued as part of the transaction. That's all for finance. Isn't it fun? That's only for first time. Oh, first mortgage loan. Okay. First mortgage loan. So okay. refis still count. They're still federally related. They still count. I got misread that. I thought it said 